What's going on Reefers, Blaine here. Today we are out in one of our warehouse buildings and we are standing next to one of our upcoming installations. You guys have actually seen this house before. We went down and actually installed one of the Red Sea tanks at this amazing mansion home. And today, well, better yet tomorrow, we're gonna be heading down to Jupiter, Florida again and we're gonna be installing this custom 400 gallon tank setup. This tank is absolutely amazing. It's got a custom Euro brace up top. Poseidon system sump down below, all custom as well. And this tank is absolutely amazing. We got a sea swirl, we got all kinds of equipment on it and we're gonna be showcasing right now here in a minute all of the different boards we're working on as well. I wanna to mention too, we did all the pre-plumbing work here on site at Top Shelf Aquatics to make things nice and easy so that way we can load the tank up, get it into the truck, and then tomorrow morning when we head down to Jupiter, we can bring it inside and we can get right to work getting this thing online. Let's go check out the boards. Like I mentioned, right next to me is gonna be one of the main controller boards that we're gonna be dealing with once we get on site. This whole controller board is completely covered in Hydros equipment. Shout out to Coralview. Gonna be a completely Hydros ran system. And Greg was smart enough to create his own little template here. And as he's been kind of setting up all the boards and everything as well, when it comes to wiring, he's been laying everything out and he's got everything kind of planned out. So that way it's gonna be nice and easy to get everything dialed in, in the right place and making sure everything fits as well. To the left of me, your guys is right, is gonna be the Rockscape. And this thing is amazing, really excited that Kevin decided to go with more of that purple rock. You know, a lot of the time he utilizes Marco rock. And when it comes to that initial start and right off the get go, it does look like a very much brand new tank when it's that stark white rock. But when you utilize this nice purple rock, I feel like the tank looks a lot more mature right off the start. Really excited to be able to see here kind of the works behind the scenes here at Top Shelf Aquatics. We've got the scape all set to go, ready to get packed up. And we've got the controller boards finishing up here today. And once they're ready to go, we'll be all set for tomorrow to head down to Jupiter and get this thing started off. we've made our trip down to Jupiter. We're here now in front of a house you guys might recognize. We did do an install here on a Red Sea Reefer. It was such an awesome tank that the client decided, why not do a custom tank? Now it's time to really start focusing up. Let's get that tank inside. Let's get the tank onto the stand. I might have to actually jump into the tank. Let's get rolling. Before we could get the tank inside, we needed to do some prep work to the area where the tank would sit getting some paper laid over the floor and clearing the area for its arrival. Once we had the room prepped, we were able to pull out the massive stand from the truck and get it unloaded to start making its way inside the house. Strapped down to the dollies, the stand started to make its round towards the doorway. The whole team was needed to make sure the stand could make its way inside safe and sound. As mentioned earlier, we moved around most of the furniture in the room so that way we could clear a path to get the tank inside and into the right spot. Again, everyone was involved getting the stand off the dollies and then slid into place. Now that we had the stand in place, we were able to start prepping the stand for electrical and cut the sections for not only the plumbing, but the electrical outlets as well. The boards were brought out to the truck once markings were made so that way we could cut out the sections needed for the stand. With everything cut and the stand prepped, Greg was able to jump right in to start directly plumbing the lines and cables into their proper locations. The plumbing was set up for automatic water changes down the line and the wire work was put up nice and clean into the top of the stand to minimize the amount of cords that you can easily see. Now with all the prep work out of the way, it was time for us to finally get the 395 gallon tank unloaded from the truck and brought into the house. Before we get the tank in, I wanted to take a little bit of time and show some appreciation to our in-house tank builder. This thing is absolutely gorgeous, and I have to say, this built-in Eurobrace up top is very unique and honestly, probably one of the nicest things I've seen come out of our store as of late. And overall though, this entire Eurobrace is a truly a unique setup, and I'm loving how we did it here at Top Shelf Aquatics. If this is something you're looking to do as well, hit us up either on Instagram, social media, you can even send us an email, anything like that. We got to get this tank inside and get it on the stand. With not a moment to waste, once the tank was out of the truck, the team was making it towards the doors to bring it inside the home. 
Like pretty much everything on this job and every task as well, it's taking the entire team to ensure that these things are making it inside nice and safe. Trying our best to be as careful as possible getting the tank onto the porch. However, we noticed there was a bit of a small problem on our hands. On these jobs, we have a lot of moving pieces and sometimes there's a little bit of hiccups in the road. As we were bringing the tank in, we have the black vinyl on the back. We noticed there was a small blemish on the vinyl. What we decided to do, we didn't want to put it up on the stand. We had our in-house tank builder, Derek, come on down. We just wanted to make sure that we had the perfect vinyl on that back wall because we didn't want to leave any blemishes on the tank before we got it onto the stand. As I said before though, these things happen and everything kind of with all these moving parts around here, we gotta make sure that sometimes when things go wrong, we fix them as soon as we can and get back to work. With Derek now on the way out to the site, we needed to do everything possibly we could in our power to save some time. So no better time than now than to get the main rock skate piece into the tank while it's low enough to do so. The central part of the scape made its way from the driveway into the house. As you can see, it's taking two strong dudes to bring this single piece inside, so there is no way this is going to be a light piece of the rock scape. Even with myself inside the tank, it was no easy task getting the piece of rock work around the Euro brace and into the tank. Obviously super heavy, but the toughest part is pretzeling your body inside the tank and giving it up to ensure the rock gets down smoothly and nothing happens to the tank. This can be a nail biting scenario, but with the TSA team, this is just another daily obstacle that we have to tackle head on. While we wait for Derek to come by, we took this chance to take a look at the system we installed a year ago last time we were down here in Jupiter, Florida. And man, has it changed. Let's take a look. As I mentioned earlier, we have set up a tank already at this household. And if you guys haven't checked out the video already, I'm gonna link it up above. Definitely be sure to check that one out before you finish out this video. This was the setup of this Red Sea tank. We have to say though, he is killing it right now with everything that's going on in the tank, as you can see over on the right-hand side of the system, an amazing LPS garden working on into the middle where you see a lot more sticks starting to show up. And then as you kind of continue your way over, some more SPS, a little bit some softies down in the foreground with your Zoas, more LPS like hammers and things like that. But overall, this tank is looking amazing just for it being under a year old. I mean, you have to say whether it be the Copper Band Butterfly, the Rennie Tilefish, the Whitetail Coal Tang, there's an amazing selection of fish, a lot of really nice corals. I have to shout out the TSA Baby Grill up front in the Euphilia Garden. Looks absolutely spectacular. You can see the Fruity Pebbles as well. There's a ton of TSA pieces inside this tank. Just a friendly reminder for every single one of you at home right now watching. If you guys are dreaming of a special tank, if you have something in mind you wanna get set up, we can do it for you here at Top Shelf Aquatics. Whether it be a giant install like we're doing right now, or a Red Sea setup, we do them all the time and we wanna let you know, head over to our website now, check out what we can provide to you guys. But I just wanted to take a minute, show you guys a little bit of an update of a system you've seen get put up and now it's been almost a year and it's looking really great. So let's go ahead, check out some money shots, see what's going on inside the tank and enjoy the system we put up for him as well. the new tank installation. The team peeled away the old vinyl since the one blemish was there and there was no need to try and make a small section fix. Let's peel off the entire thing and start fresh. Looking at the tank with the vinyl off, it really made us wish this was a full peninsula styled tank because we love seeing all the different viewing panels, but it just wasn't meant to be for this project. The gyre pumps were set up on the far end of the tank and mounted onto the Europe race up top of the tank Doing so allows for more of the system to be seen and less of the equipment to be in the line of vision. The sea swirl was then put into place and was ready to provide that dynamic moving flow. Sea swirls are not a common thing we see in the hobby and on most builds, but for this one, we thought it was appropriate to add a little bit of a splash of some extra flow to make this tank nice and dynamic. With Derek finally on site, we were able to get right back to work on putting the new pieces of vinyl onto the tank, and then we could get this installation project moving in the right direction. 
Derek made quick work of getting the new vinyl onto the tank, and within minutes there was never any issue, no bubbles, clean edges, and the vinyl was ready to rock and roll and last a long time on this tank. With that hiccup out of the way, it was time to get this big tank onto the stand so that we can finally shift the whole unit into place. Now with the tank on the stand, we could bring in the remainder pieces of the aquascape inside the home. And as you can see, I was able to carry just a single piece of this scape by myself, showing just how much lighter these sections are than the actual centerpiece. Once again, I climbed my way into the tank and readied myself for the remaining two sections of the scape. With how big these scape sections are and how deep the tank is, it's essential that I'm inside the tank and on the receiving end of these pieces. Of course, it was not just one section, but two that I was able to cradle down onto the bottom of the tank with no issues. The scape has made its way into the tank and I have to once again shout out to Kevin for another amazing job on this custom rock scape. I mentioned it before, but now being able to see it in the tank, this idea of a two thirds rule, kind of allowing the scape to take up two thirds of the tank and having that extra third for all of your fish to swim around the coral growth. I'm really excited about this one. Getting this tank now online, everybody's working on the electrical. Then we're gonna start working on getting sand, getting this thing filled up, but let's take some time to appreciate the rock scape because it's truly a piece of art. With the final pieces of the scape making its way into the tank, we could start filling the tank up with sand. Using once again the Carib Sea sand mixing together both the reef grade and the Fiji pink to create the perfect layer of substrate. Mixing the two types of sand helps give your substrate a good balance of granular sizes and look much more natural. With sand laid, Greg got to work getting the first board of electronics hung up onto the system. This out of all the installs I've been on is easily the craziest controller board setup I've ever seen. A lot of time, preparation, and thought was put into making this controller board setup and making it happen. With all that said, the first day had come to a close and it was time for us to call it an evening and return back in the AM. All right, reefers, we are all wrapped up for day one here on site down in Jupiter, Florida. We've got the scape in the tank, we've got sand in the tank, we've got all the wiring situated. And tomorrow what we're gonna do bright and early is we're gonna come back here, we're gonna fill the tank up, we're gonna get this thing online, and then we're gonna showcase this system for every single one of you. I wanna say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe down below, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, everyone, we are back again for day two of the install. And what we've got going on right now is we just ran the hose into the house. We're gonna start filling up the tank here soon. We've got a lot of water to add today. And then we've got the second board getting ready to get mounted up as well. And then we're gonna start just getting everything dialed in. We'll get the tank online and then we can showcase this system up and running. Let's get to work. First things first, the hose was run through the house and into the tank and it was time to start filling this bad boy up. The first moments of water hitting a new system is always so exciting. Before getting the tank completely full, Gene and Greg worked on getting the final electronics board installed. Final wires were run and the final touches on other equipment were made so that the system could finally be kicked online. We've got the tank all filled up. Now it's time to start getting everything online. We're gonna get the Abyss pump on. We're gonna start turning all the equipment on. We're gonna get this thing rolling, but this is definitely one of the favorite parts of mine when it comes to these installs. We've got the tank completely filled. Let's get this thing rolling. All the small details were finalized, final coating, last minute adjustments, and small changes were made here and there just before the moment of truth and getting this tank finally turned on and running. Ammonia and bacteria were added into the system to help start up the cycling process as well. With the tank finally up and running, and after working out some small things with the flow and pump speeds, we could look back at this install and begin to wrap things up. Hi, 
Reefers, we are all situated here on site. We've got the tank inside, we've got water filled up, and it's now running. We have a couple things we need to touch up, and also the cabinetry work isn't done yet, so we'll end up coming down. I'll give you guys an update in a future video, but I wanted to say thank you guys so much for tuning in, checking out the update on the old tank, checking out the new tank we put in, and if you guys are looking for any custom tank install work, be sure to reach out to us at Top Shelf Aquatics. If you guys have hung out all the way till the end, I wanna say thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads.